Hi there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Today we're going to be putting the gearbox, hopefully, we'll see, back on the old 20 horse Mercury. This is one that I had running a while back. I got the carburetor, I had good compression, got good spark, did a little carburetor work and we pulled it, she popped off and ran. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, but we had no water cooling system because I couldn't run it very long because I don't have the gearbox on it. This is one that I pulled apart and lo and behold, the uh, gearbox, the spline that goes up in the power head was half worn out. Now, chances are you could probably run that for many more years to come. I don't know, but I did pick up another outboard for 50 bucks, uh, 20 horse that had a good gearbox on it. And the splines were like half as worn as the one I took off. So I'm going to put that one back in. So we're going to get busy looking at that gearbox, getting it put back together. You know, it's not a part, but getting it, uh, make sure the water pump is in good shape. And we're going to stick this back on here. And then we'll be ready to start testing in the test tank and get this ready for next spring. It's not going to go in the water this uh, year because this is, uh, we're, we're mid-November right now, or late November, maybe by the time you see this video, and the water's already starting to freeze in some areas. It's below freezing here right now. The high today was like 30 degrees. Um, not gonna be doing a lot of outside, outside activities, but I've got lots of outboard content. I got lots of Mercruiser uh, inline four content coming up for you. We've got, I've got plenty of, plenty of stuff to keep us busy this winter indoors, where well, we got the temperature set at 55 in here, which is my working temperature. And uh, we're gonna go from there and get a bunch of stuff ready for next spring so we can hit the, sp hit the spring, both feet on the ground, hand on the throttle, hand on the wheel, and water shooting out the back of the boat. All right, let's jump in and get busy on this guy. All right, it's been a few days since I did the intro to this video. You saw there, I went back to a video that was about a year old actually. Maybe not a year old, but uh, where I had this thing running. And I was running it without any water pump or anything on it because I didn't have the gearbox on it, so it didn't matter. I ran it for a little bit, just to make sure it pop and run. You know, and I've got all the, this still got all the original insulation in it. We got the, the front badge for it yet. So what we need to do now is get our gearbox sorted out uh, with that problem that it had, which was the, Oh, about half wore out drive shaft. Um, I don't know why I see this on the 20 horses. Maybe they got a lot of power and maybe the, the drive shafts in that time frame weren't heat treated well enough. The other thing I noticed about uh, Mercury over Evernrude or uh, Johnson's of the same era is the Johnson's and Evernrude shafts stay cleaner. I don't know if they have a higher chromium content. Don't know what they're made out of. Maybe they've got a a tighter heat treat that keeps them from rusting and eroding, but the Mercury's just didn't didn't quite get there. But they will last a long time. I mean, this has been around since 1975, and we're gonna make it last a little bit longer. Now I've got you in here in a pretty tight shot here, and I want to see if I can show you the difference between these two. Can you see the difference in the wear there? This one I just brought in to the screenshot is quite a bit, there's quite a bit of wear there. This one here doesn't have quite as much wear. We're going to go ahead now and back off these three bolt or nuts. And uh, we're going to pull the water pump off and take a look at it. Now this one has quite a bit of curvature on it. A decent amount of wear. It's not bad. This thing probably would have ran for quite a while longer, but I, I'm going to go ahead and put a new one in because that's what it deserves. And that's what it's going to get. Well, let's see if this gearbox is holding any secrets back from me that's refusing to tell me about. Like, hopefully all we get out of here is just oil. Good, clear oil. That's some thick stuff. But it's just gear oil, that's it. So we like to see. Well, 
across what we like to see is just good clear oil, gear oil, perfect. Now we're going to pay attention to this little guy right here. Alrighty, we're back out here with a slight detour. Um, well, let's just say that you know my exhaust fan for the wintertime operations of my in and my uh, test tank, uh, this thing wouldn't turn on when I went to turn it on. But we also know that this thing had a real problem. I don't know if it was a real problem. It has a lot of vacuum. When I, you know this is this was designed to blow up a giant slide bounce house type thing and. Uh, I'm using it to suck fumes out of my out of my test tank and we're going to be real close to the test tank here today with this mercury So I got to get this thing going so I don't kill myself While we're trying to run this thing indoors And I also this thing when I I pulled this cover off and this was stuck, but as you can You'll be able to hear it here. I freed it up, but That's a lot of bearing noise going on right there a whole lot um, but this thing has those tamper-proof Torx type screw heads um, So I went to Harbor Freight They have this cool little kit that has all Let's just say all the tamper-proof uh, Bits in one little kit for about six dollars and I was able to start taking this thing apart so now Huh in order to get the motor off, I gotta take this cover off. And I got my handy dandy little magnetic tray here, but I won't bore you with all this, but once I get inside, we'll see if we can access that bearing. Maybe I can just buy another bearing. I do have another little 320 CFM blower coming that won't pull quite as much air. And I have a feeling what I had a problem with this blower is it pulled so much air that any moisture that would splash up into the tube, even though I had the tube going up and over, so as the water came up, it would just drip back down. It pulled so hard that it would just pull it and blow it outside and just fill everything up with water. I think I just had, you know, too much power. But time will tell. That won't be here till, you know, for about another week. But in the meantime, maybe I can get this one doing well enough. That I can run this 20 horse indoors because all I got to do is put the gearbox on now as you saw me fix it uh, Fix the skeg on it. We're gonna put a water pump back in it here in just a minute. So just hang tight uh, And uh, we'll get that back onto the Onto the outboard hang the outboard in the tank and we're gonna pull and run it I I don't I might not be able to run it very long because of the smoke and the fumes indoors, but uh Maybe this will allow me to do it. So we'll check back here in a minute. All righty, we got everything taken apart on that blower. This bearing is perfectly fine. That thing is smooth. Oh, on the armature. This one here, not so good. This is the side that was on the impeller side, exposed to where moisture and whatnot can get to it. As you can see here, completely covered in rust. When you roll it, it is uh, rough. But it's a 6202 RZ. We'll get one of those ordered. We'll get a blower back together. We'll be back in operation before I know it. All right, we've got our we've got our new impeller here, and we've got a key. And we got some grease. There's nothing in the doing but the doing it. We're gonna go ahead and get uh, a little bit of grease right here. I do that so it holds this little. I'm gonna rotate it around so you can see it. Holds this key. I'm falling all over the place for me. And then I'm going to put a little grease on this face. Slide this down and get that key lined up. And get that socked right down the place. Now what you're going to see, this looks bigger than the gasket. Well, that's what it is. Once it gets curled up inside of here, 
it's going to fit just fine. But, it's always a but. I put some marine grease inside this cap. I put it all over these, these fins here. Just so this thing does never start up dry. There we go. We got everything lined full of grease. Now what you want to do, looking from the top down, top down, you can put this on and you rotate this shaft clockwise and push down. It might take a little bit of pressure, but it'll just it'll just pop right into place and spin. Just like that. Then you're ready to put your washers and your bolts or your bolts and or your washers and your nuts back on. Now at this point the shaft should turn. You'll feel the resistance because there's a little pressure in there but not a lot of resistance. One thing I'm doing here is I'm, I'm turning it clockwise looking from the top down clockwise and the prop is turning clockwise from the back that means you're in forward gear. That's where you want to be before you do your reassembly. I'll pull this nut back off of here because I put it back on there so I wouldn't lose it. And we'll get ready to, we're going to grease this spline up. We're going to grease the spline up up top. Uh, we're also going to put grease in this little hole here. This is where the copper water tube goes down in and the grease will help it. Sl it slides in pretty good, pretty, uh, got some resistance, which seals going to seal it up really good. But I just, I like to have that little, little extra insurance when it goes to go together that it's going to go together without you know any hammers you don't put this stuff together with hammers this tube here looks a little rough but all that tube is designed to do is to get this tube started in here so it picks up the center and goes into place when you're assembling it that's what that's all about now I'm going to show you a little trick here because when you have the gearbox off this thing has a tendency to be very balanced forward versus leaning against this like it normally would if it had the gearbox on and as you can see here if I was playing around with it all of a sudden it could fall and I want this to be trapped this way so I'm going to take me a little zip tie here this might seem like kind of a waste of a zip tie but having things fall when you're not expecting them to fall sucks too so I can zip tie that right there right now you see that's keeping that pulled that way so no matter what I do that's going to stay right there all right let's see what we can do about getting this gearbox reassembled first things first I want to get that copper tube back up where it belongs and I can see right where that needs to go and it looks like when this is back assembled kind of jogs over a little bit yeah we'll go about like that but we get that back up in here. Put a little, little dab or do a grease on that too. Yep. That's right up into place where I can see it. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the shifter is also in forward, which is forward on this one. Because there's a skip tooth on this particular piece here. There's a skip tooth spline that will allow it to line up where it belongs. Now this is where it gets a little trickier. 
because I got to get that copper tube lifted up a little bit. So it'll start into the, the bottom seal. There we go, she slid into the starting tube, or the guide tube, which is good. All right, now let's see if we can wrestle the rest of it up into place. All right, what I found out here, I got all the tube lined up in there like I did before, but I was having trouble, I was hitting a stop. Well, the shift shaft that's down in here will kind of falls off to one side. So I, what I did is I let this thing down vertically and kind of wiggled, wiggled it a little bit and she went bloop right up into place. But then I had to back it back off just a touch to get this nut started because this one won't go on if it's all the way seated. There's not enough room for the nut and the end of the stud there to fit. So dropped it down just a little bit, got this nut started. Now we're back into place. It's all good. Then we still got the back here. Uh, there's a, so this is still in gear now. Let's shift it back to neutral. Let's see what it does. Beautiful. Reverse. Might not go into reverse if I've got things goes back into gear. I might have two. Might have to play with it a little bit. Might I might have to move the engine to get it to pop back in reverse. That's fine. I've got a stud right here that a nut goes on, and then another bolt goes down through here. Got one more bolt to pull it put in, but I want to pull this prop off. We're gonna look behind it real quick. This thing feels smooth and slick and nice. I like it. Everything looks pretty good back here. We'll put some more grease on the splines, put it back together. Basically just checking it to make sure there's no fishing line behind it. Pull the bottom plug back out. You know, from when we drained it the other day. And I'm also gonna remove this upper plug right here. It's the little guy, not the big guy. It's the little guy on this one. Uh, one day they finally got smart and they started putting the same size plug on both sides. You know, instead of uh, just the big one and the little one. So I'm pulling her all the way out here. We're going to set it right there. And now, Emsoil, if you're listening out there, and if you guys are just tuned in to me and just found my channel, you know that I use... Full synthetic marine gear lube, 75W90 in all my gearboxes. Every one of them. No exceptions. And uh, Amazon, if you're listening, I mean, I've, I've been plugging you for, for years now. You should be sending... This hose has gotten way too stiff. What the... How? Why? Goodness gracious. Well... I can get her wrangled in here. Anyway, we're going to pump her full from the bottom to the top. Now, some of you folks may or may not know this, but there's, I've seen where people are trying to fill it from the top, you know, because like they think they could change the oil in the car. Nope, don't do that. Fill it from the bottom. Because if there's small passages on some of your gear drives, you'll think you got it full and you're not even half full. Now, I'm starting off here with about, let's just look at this, eight, uh, eight, nine, ten ounces maybe. Well, let's just see how much this one takes. But Amsoil, you know, don't be afraid. Uh, send me an email. And uh, I'll give you my address. You can send me a... Uh, Several cases of this. I go through a lot of this. And uh, 
I've been plugging you for a long time. This uh, let's there we go. She's coming out the top now. We'll go ahead and stick this plug back in. And most of you know, you know, you stick this tupper plug back in, tighten her up, seals it up. And then when you pull the bottom out to put the bottom plug back in, it creates a little vacuum. So, it, you know, it really doesn't just run out that bad. And you guys are looking at me getting, you know, this, uh, why? What's happening here? There we go. Uh, creates a vacuum so you don't lose much when you put this bottom plug back in at all not enough to even make a you know this here that didn't even come out a drop there but i ain't got her started yet there we go not even a drop all right gearbox filled what do we got left Maybe an ounce. That probably took maybe nine ounces. I'll go ahead and change this over for the next go round. I need to get some new hose. That hose is, well, I'm guessing it's a couple years old now. It's it's uh, gotten a little stiff. Save every ounce. This stuff is not cheap, but it's definitely worth it. As you know, it says right on the back of the bottle, you can get up to 10% water contamination in your gear oil and not impact the lubricity of the oil. And that's kind of a big deal for me because these are expensive. And I want them to last as long. This is cheap insurance overall. All right, enough said about that. I had to do a little work on the old hoist there. It came uncoiled. It must have been when the whole thing fell on me a while back and it hadn't used it since then. But we've got it in the test tank. Uh, let's see if she'll fire and run like it did before. We'll move the throttle to just a touch past start. I'm gonna try it without choke first. And uh, we'll go from there. I think we're ready. seems to run pretty good I'm um, getting air out the pee hole but I'm not getting any water not sure what's going on there let's do a quick check on forward reverse and then we'll address that
Well, I gotta get my new exhaust in here for sure. Uh, that kicks up quite a bit of smoke and kind of fogging me out a little bit. But what we do know is she fires and runs really well. It shifts into forward and reverse just fine. Everything's smooth. Even gave it a couple of big zaps on the throttle and it just handled the load. Carburetor seems to be right. Fuel pump pumping good. Uh, only thing that's not pumping though is this water pump, but I can feel air puffing out the pee hole. So, I gotta figure out what that's all about. But, everything on it works as it should, almost. So, I'm gonna go ahead and lift it back out of here. Um, I heard a little ting, ting, ting sound that was coming out of here. I'm not sure what's uh, running close there or not. Um, maybe we'll make a part. This will be like part three. Maybe we'll make a part four on the rest of it. Let me get this out of here and we'll talk a little more about things. All right, now some of you talked about, left some comments on the previous video about this uh, skeg here on the bottom coming to a point. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, they're supposed to be flat on the bottom. They're supposed to be this, that. Yeah, I've seen all kinds. I've seen flat flared on the bottom. I've seen rounded on the bottom. I've seen sharp. You know, it just depends on what type, what, what's your personal preference here. I put a piece back on. I could, I could stub this back off, you know, make it flat again if I want. I could round it if I wanted. But my boats, and I'll say this just once. My boats sit there on the boat or on a stand and this doesn't touch the ground. So uh, this would be, I'd back a boat up to here, hang this on the boat and this thing never touches the ground, you know, cause sometimes they're flat on purpose for people to handle them, set them down, pick them back up, set them down without damaging that sharp edge. Mine's going to have a sharp edge. Now, if the person that buys this from me decides that, no, I don't like that sharp edge. He can take a he can take a grinder and just take that off. Just take that much of it off and make it flat again. It's aluminum. It's not going to rust. You can shoot it with a little bit of gloss black. Nobody's none the wiser. Anyway, like I said, it's all personal preference. I just wanted to touch on that. Um, I'm really curious why the water wasn't pumping, and I'm not sure why that is. So I'm going to do some more investigation. I'm going to close out this video so it doesn't get too crazy long on us here. Uh, what did we get accomplished here? We pulled a motor, an outboard that we, you know, we did a carburetor in it a long time ago. Uh, finally found a gearbox for it, stuck another gearbox on it, repaired it, put a new water pump in. I'm 99.9% .9 right, pretty, pretty sure I put it in right, but uh, I think there might be a thermostat that's plugged. It's not letting the air come through. And, you know, the air's coming through. For some reason it's pumping a little bit of air but it's not pumping any water so i'm going to check the thermostat out i also had a really high pitch metal on metal kind of ting 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 up in here when i revved it up we're going to pull this back off because there's three bolts or three nuts under here that i use for temporarily holding this down i've got some stainless steel uh locking nuts that are coming that i'll swap that back out with so that'll all be the same nut uh, in case somebody else goes in here and wonders what Yahoo worked on this. They won't see that I just put any three, you know, uh, 516, 24 nuts in there. They're all matching. So we got a few little things to do yet to bring it all the way to the finish line, but we're really, really close. I'm really happy. This thing starts amazingly easy. Uh, one thing I've loved about these 20, 25, and 30 horse outboards, when you get them tuned up right, they're just a, they're just a roll it over pop thing and they seem to take off and go. Now, we still got a lot of things to do. So let's just say, what do we have here? Mercury water pump. We got that one here. Uh, install gearbox, we did that. Start up 20 horse Merc, we did that. So this is all done. Now we gotta do some more stuff. Now still, as you can still see, there's plenty of things on my list of things to do. 
uh, that I'm trying to get accomplished this weekend. Woo! I hope I can get it done. You know, I got to clean and paint the 50 horse gearbox and install water pump. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and install the water pump and then reinstall the gearbox and then I'm gonna start working on cleaning it up, sanding it for paint. That color thing, if you go back a couple videos ago, I'm not too far away from now, so my color choices, I've got my paint colors over here on my bench and I have an idea how I wanna have it pictured in my head, how it's gonna look and go in the banana. Uh, we gotta assemble the big secret. It's over there, 85 gearbox, assemble Johnson and start. 85 Johnson. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got a, got this coming up in future video. This is a 25, what was this, a 25 horse? Where'd it go, where are you? Where could it have gone? There it is, yeah. It's a 1985 20 horse Johnson. This gearbox looks terrible, but you could tell it sat in the water a lot. Engine, the, the power head runs beautifully, but I went to shift it in the gear and all I heard was a bunch of clatter. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, we're gonna take this apart. So lots of things to do on the list yet this weekend. Uh, this knocked off, I've knocked off of a handful of things. Uh, repair blower exhaust I circled here. That's because I got it started tearing apart. I got the bearings will be ordered tonight. Won't show up till next week. I'll put that back together. And my other exhaust fan will hopefully be here so I can actually, I want to be able to run this thing more. And uh, not only that, we got to put it back in the tank here after a while. Uh, see if we can get that thermostat or get the water pumping or find out what the obstruction is. I blew, I blew air back backwards through it and bubbles came out at the bottom like it should. So it's not plugged, but I have a feeling the water is not flowing through the thermostat like it should. Cause I did check the head temperature and it got up way past uh, like 160, 170. It should be chilling like a villain and it's not. So I wanna, um... anyway, we shut it down before any damage is done obviously. But uh, so we'll, uh, we'll set this aside. Uh, and I'll uh, check out the thermostat and stuff like that and video some more of that stuff or what I'm going through here share that with you in another video but for now we'll just push it out of the way we got some other stuff on the board to do uh, this one's so close to the finish line it's not funny mm -hmm.